on. Hello, everybody. We got a hell of a show for you right here. Of course, you guys already know it's the two man power trip here for you. Cod, Cod Sinclair, Ryan Alvarez. I don't know which name you want to go by today. Ref bump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As whatever. Always, I'm your host, Matt. And uh, right off the bat, guys, we're going to give you guys a hardcore justice prediction. And we're then going to cover NXT, uh, Stand and Deliver, both nights. Uh, fantastic wrestling so far from NXT this week and uh, AEW on Wednesday. A lot of fun stuff. Um, yeah, real real quick, though, um, outside of the, you know, major promotions, um, just to cover the one um, result from Bloodsport, which would be the main event. Um, if you haven't seen it, um, cover your ears, mute your thing for the next five seconds. Um, Mox gets bloodied up and loses to Josh Barnett. Um, it was an absolute war. Um, whatever your feelings are on Bloodsport, I know that it's a much better done version of Raw Underground <laughs> because nobody wants to relive that BS. Um, but it's incredibly well done. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the match. If you go back and watch it for anything, go back and watch that. But definitely worth it. But we got a lot of wrestling to cover and to get to. God, do we. <laughs> so we're going to start right off the bat here with uh, Hardcore Justice. We're going to take a look at that. That is Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, yeah? Yeah. And uh, uh, not... Uh, not the strongest card in terms of everything else we have this week, but still a pretty good card that I think we're going to have some uh, surprisingly good matches in. Yeah, this was that. This, uh, the start of the card was only announced like two weeks ago, but um, you have to think though, if, and I also think this is why um, AEW added uh, the house always wins kind of late in the game. Um, everybody else has some form of show going on this weekend or this week, um, you know, kind of like a bigger, like name brand show. And I feel like because hardcore justice is not a, it's not an April show tip, typically, if you're thinking about old, you know, uh, t- uh you know, TNA and impact days, um, it's certainly not an April show, but um, there's a lot of gimmick matches on here. So I feel like Impact um, kind of kind of smart. Um, you know, some of the matches still are incomplete. Um, adding a little bit of intrigue, make, making you tune in to watch. Um, so it, it's definitely, I think, a great decision on Impact. Im- on impacts part to add something to this, you know, weekend, although it adds stress to the PWO crew as always. You know, though that being said, this week has not been as bad as I was expecting it to be in terms of coverage. Could have been way worse. The, I was expecting way worse. Wednesday tore me apart because oh, yeah. uh, tip, typically the way that I watch on Wednesdays is watch AEW, tape NXT, and then the next day, watch NXT before the podcast, which will be fixed and solved coming up this next week. But um, Wednesday was tough. Thursday was a little easier. Um, but, you know, just the last couple of days have been a little tough, to be honest with you. Yeah, just keeping up with everything has been a little quick. And I know we also have some big surprises coming from Mania that have been mm-hmm. covered. But that is uh, for another video. Keep your eyes out for that. Uh, but let's talk about this hardcore justice card here. And we'll give you our prediction as we uh, go down the card. Uh, I think first up here, we have Doc Gallows with Carl Anderson facing off with Black Taurus uh, with Crazy Steven Rosemary in a singles match. This is, I think, a kind of a quick thrown together match, um, just giving them a- another match on the card prior to Rebellion, in my opinion. Mm. I think you have to give this one to Doc Gallows. You know, I w- that's probably what's going to happen. Um, it wouldn't surprise me, though, if Black Taurus steals a win to kind of keep up with the impact storyline of, 
you know, Doc Gallows, Carl Anderson, you know, not winning matches they should. Um, going going back to their uh, tag team title loss, um, where they were kind of on the outs, or they thought they were on the outs. Um, yeah. With you know Kenny May and Doc Gallows, but you're ab- you're absolutely right. This should be a win for Doc Gallows. Uh, up next, we have. Oh, I gotta scroll down here. Uh, Mahabalashira versus Hernandez in a chairly legal match. Uh, so this seems like a chairs match. It's a chairs match. Know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if WWE has the uh, trademark on chairs match. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I kind of um, like the chairly legal. <laughs> it's a good point. Yeah. Solid point. Um, it's kind of a mismatch between that and um the old ECW pay-per-view barely legal, um, which I actually took a look at on an episode of Alvarez versus Meltzer this past week, uh, the ECW title match between Terry Funk and Raven. Um, I have Shara winning this. Um, he's got to pick. Yeah. He's, he's got to pick up a win. They really hyped uh, his return. Um, kind of a mellow return for him. Um, you know, the last, the last ring king world world champion. Um, yeah, but Hernandez is the hired gun. I think he has a little more momentum at this point, but um, it would be nice to see Cheryl win this. I agree. I agree. And I think he, he will. Um, Hernandez, I think, can afford to eat the pin. Yeah. All right, up next, we have Ace Austin and a tag team partner to be determined versus TJP. And a tag team partner to be determined, and versus Josh Alexander and a tag team partner to be determined. So it's a triple threat and a triple threat tag, and all mm-hmm. the guys from I think the last triple threat that we had with these three uh, will get to pick a partner. I I figure most of us are expecting Fulton. I believe I can't remember if they mm-hmm. did to kind of push him out of the match or not, but not not that I recall. Um, so I imagine Fulton will be there for Ace Austin. Um, Hear me out. TJP is going to be manic, and we're going to get suicide, which is going to be Caleb, uh, with, Caleb a with a K. Yep. Or maybe you'll get Caleb with a K dressed as manic. Oh, gosh. Which. <laughs> and uh, I imagine Josh Alexander will have. Chris Bay returning from injury. That would be a really nice swing here. Um, um, I don't, I don't really know. Slowly pushed him face, I felt, uh, prior to his injury. I imagine it'll be Chris Bay versus Ace Austin at Rebellion for the belt, which will also be a banger of a match. Yeah, you're 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 starting to find your way to my heart. Um, uh, Chris Bay would be a welcome addition at this point. Um, I'm tired of seeing tjp just in general um i don't i don't really understand uh you know the hype that comes with him and you know i get it you know some people like him he's fine in ring um but there's just something missing and it just doesn't click for me um i i still expect um ace austin and Madman Fulton win this match. Um, the only way I could see otherwise is if um, is if it is manic and suicide. Oh, um, I think Josh Alexander and Chris Bay eat eat the pin, and that'll lead to a number one contenders match. And that's where Chris Bay will get the win, get the tag t- or get the uh, title shot at Rebellion. I think Josh Alexander and Chris Bay win this match. <laughs> Pinning whoever is TJP's tag partner. Mm. Caleb Caleb with a suicide. I want to make a lot of really mean jokes, but I'm also trying to get monetized. So, huzzah. (laughs) uh, No, I mean, if it's not, um, if it's not manic, um, there's always room for someone ridiculous to come in here. Uh, I'm trying to think who else is in the X division. Storm, or not Storm, I'm sorry. Uh, Chris Saban, I think, is always a possibility, but I think he's going to be in a match we'll talk about later. Um, mm. 
<laughs> Probably. I'd say Willie Mack, but I think he's going to be in a match that we're going to talk about later. Um, so, but yeah, maybe, yeah. you know, it'd be a good there, call here. Mm. Uh, wasn't um, TJP and Follow Ball like the Pan Am Express, something along those lines? Something like that. That was my next guess because he, because, because Paul Ball is living in a box right now, so yeah, he obviously has nothing going on. Um, there's not a whole lot left on the table though for TJP. I mean, Rich Swan's not on the card. I mean, yeah, but I have a hard time seeing. But that. they're not gonna do that though. I mean, I mean, just 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 kind of spitball like X Division X, X Division esque guys. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what is a possibility, but I don't think is actually a possibility. How great would it be if Josh Alexander brought in Ethan Page for one night? Jesus Christ! That Change my pick immediately. Yeah. The North. Yeah. Look, look. <laughs> uh, we're gonna move on here to the next match, but I do want to emphasize that if it's the North, the North are winning. It's not happening, but God, I want it to. All right, up next here, we have a weapons match to determine the number one contender for the Impact Knockouts Championship. It's Alicia Edwards versus Havoc versus Jordan Grace versus Rosemary versus Susan versus Tennille Dashwood. Kind of surprised there's not Nevaeh in this match, but I think she's probably going to end up costing Havoc. Yeah, um, allow me to take the lead here. Take it. Uh, Jordan Grace is winning this match. And it's kind of it. It kind of leads more into my prediction for um, the more than likely main main event of this show, uh, the uh, the knockouts title match. So they go hand hand in hand. Um, All, right. All right, that's fair. Um, I also think Janelle Dashwood um, is another great selection because. She's kind of the only one left for Deanna Perrazzo. Um, if we're looking at it from that perspective. I think you're right. That being said, there's just this, this small part of me that goes, you know who would win, win a match with all kinds of weapons and crap in it? Someone who's real good at dealing with managers, people who run businesses, uh, general Susan. jerk-offs. You know I'm talking about Susan. Yeah, I see. It, it, there's just a segment on Impact on Thursday mm-hmm. that. Um, <sighs> see, so here, so here's my thought process. Spoiler alert: I do not have Deanna Peraza retaining the knockouts title. Um, and that is because Susan, um, I, I believe, takes a really bad bump in this match. Um, They're going to play it off. She is going to come out during the main event, cost Deanna Peraza the title. Um, and that is how we get Jazz versus Jordan Grace. Um, and, and that's the way that I'm, yeah, thank you. Thank you. The, that's exactly what I envision seeing as well. So I guess let's just go ahead and do what I think the main event is. Gianna Peraza I, versus Jazz. Yeah, I think both of us have Jazz winning this. Booker by yeah. Cruff and then a Jordan Grace heel turn, baby. Yeah, it's coming. It's got – I mean, there's not a lot of faces in general in the knockouts division, but I think Jordan Grace's character um, can flip when you need it to. And I think she does a great job of both. Um, but I, I I do think that eventually um, this is how we get the title back on Jordan Grace, um, pressuring Jazz to put her career back on the line. And this is how uh, Jazz will go out. And I think that's the right call. I mean, we've said this before in, in earlier prediction shows. Mm. Um all right. Oh, Brian Myers versus Jake something. Blind games match. Uh, <laughs> um, gosh, you know, there hasn't been much luck with uh, blindfold matches. Um, although I found the um, – I found 
I, I found this segment funny when Tommy Dreamer tells Brian Myers he's in the blind games match and he's like, what is that? Well, what is a blind games match? And then, and then Dreamer just goes, eh, it's, it's a blindfold match. It's a blindfold match. And he just says, yeah, well, they just call it a blindfold match. Like, just the whole back and forth there was was a was a high point for um, Impact this past week. Yeah, I think Jake something is winning. I think Cardona cost Brian Myers. That's yeah, that's kind of where like Myers because... can go too far. But we already have their match confirmed for Rebellion, so I almost want I want to, to Myers keep... to go over. I want... So that he can keep momentum? Yeah. It makes sense, but it also sticks yeah. with the storyline where if Cardona does cost Brian Myers, it just of, you know, not only wanting this to be over, but at the same time just kind of digging into his crawl a little bit. God damn it. I hate Pirates baseball. Sorry. Carry on. Is it that history in Arlington right now? Yeah. Oh. I just got a Facebook update about it from a sports group I follow. So I'm well they're live. <laughs> well, the pirates typical fire sale every three to four years of big name pitchers and capable ball players and one just happens to throw the first no-no in Padres history. So um okay. with that being said, the pirates continue to blow leads and lose ball games. Um, but yeah, uh, I think Jake something is winning the blind games match. Yeah, no, I'm with that. Um, last match of the night here for, for hardcore justice, eight man, hardcore war. It is Ooh. team dreamer, which is Tommy dreamer and three wrestlers to be announced versus violent by design. All four members of violent by design. Eric Young, Joe Doring, Rhino, and Diener. Uh, I think this is the match where uh, a man gets hurt. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we talked about earlier here. EY has a uh, receives a torn ACL. I just don't remember torn ACL or maybe a torn pec. Something torn where he's out for six to nine months. Yeah. Um. So, who do you think Tommy Dreamer's three mystery partners are? It is a torn ACL. Okay. Um, so, Saban, because, yeah. Storm, because, yeah. And typically, this would be Jake something. Um, but uh, I think Willie Mack here. Mm, okay. Who you got? So, I'll give you... Oh, I'm dumb. I think I know the the right answer here. <laughs> All right. So, Chris Saban, James Storm, and if he is well enough to compete, it's the Wildcat Chris <laughs> Harris. Yeah. 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 Adds up. Now, what I will do is throw in three names that um, I would love to see. That would be nice swerves. Um, one one would be Sabu because he's still wrestling and he's um, hardcore. And he's hardcore uh, when when you go ahead and pay him enough. Yeah. Um, number you two would be an Arabian moonsault. Yeah. Actually, I'll just give you one more name. I'm not going to flood uh, the time we have. Um, Moose. Ooh. Um. I know it's out of sense. We haven't since he lost to. Oh man! Yeah, since he lost to Rich Swan. Now I I know that's far and in between for this, um, but Tommy Dream and Moose have some have some history and a little bit of mutual respect there as far as the wars that they've had. Yeah, um, that's know. a good answer. That's a good answer there. Moose uh, is so, great so maybe you know Dreamer gets jumped in the back, or maybe Chris Harris is a little oh, bit maybe. too a little bit too uh, you know 
I want to be polite about this. He's not, he's just not in. From the he's just not in. He yeah, he's just not in mat shape. Let's be honest. Um, in that brutal although, attack on Thursday. Although in his defense, uh, he looks better than Braden Walker did in ECW. So there's that. Uh, because knock knock, who's who's there? Braden Walker, and I'm gonna bash her head in. Stupid <laughs> God! <laughs> what a what a way. <laughs> What a way to waste, you know, one one of the better tag team guys of the mid to 2000s with a stupid then, catchphrase on your third brand. God damn he, it. Then he came back to Impact with Dread and it was weird. Yeah, and he was <laughs> overweight. <laughs> all right. Well, you know what, though? I think all our options here are good. Who do you have winning yeah. this? I'm thinking um, Team Dreamer with Dreamer. I'm also thinking. Eh. I don't know who eats the pin, but I but I think that Team Dreamer gets the win. Um, it it just it just makes sense the way that they've been telling this story. Hear me out. Uh, they said on Impact on Thursday that if Doring lost his match, uh, there'd be punishment for him. Hmm. Yeah, do you remember that? Yeah, are going to win yet? Um, there's a part of me that wonders remember the last time he had a punishment he was locked in a room and beaten <laughs> high hell yeah um, I wonder if maybe he gets locked in a room again and we get a new member of EBD I don't know I think the addition of Rhino was a good move I don't know how quick they will be to pull the trigger to see if Maybe at least for the short term, we get somebody to um, kind of fill the in-ring spot of EY. But you know what they're what they're doing right now is outstanding um, from from all creative directions. Um, promos are fantastic. Vignettes are fantastic. Um, the in-ring work is matching the story they're telling, and. This is one of the best heel factions in United States pro wrestling right now. Hear me out. Rohit Raju with VBD. Hmm. See, he seems to... He's been, he's been a little comedic as of late. Yeah. That being said, I think the intensity he brings to the ring and his in-ring work Definitely fits the VVD mindset. And if you need a replacement for one night, per se, or maybe a tryout, um, you know, him trying to find his way back in to the X Division title. He he had a really good end of the year for 2020. You know, maybe Mm -hmm. we can we can justify him having to take that that corner, turn that corner. True. Um, And I don't think we saw him on when on Thursday, did we? Uh, if so, it was in a quick segment backstage. And I don't, I don't, know if we saw him I don't remember either. I mean, maybe he had something with Follow Ball still. You know, the week before, I think it was his match with Follow Ball, um, or or a tag match with Ball or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, actually, I think that, that was the one where Shira, I think, went over. Mm. So after mm. losing to Shira, maybe maybe he's looking for some way to get back to where he should be. So that, that could be a, a good way to write that in. I think he's someone who you could kind of, I don't want to say phone in there, but you could write him in and it could make sense. Yeah, agreed. Um, so there's that, there's that. But that's Hardcore Justice. That's going to be a fun show leading up to WrestleMania here. Before we talk about NXT Stand and Deliver, Cod, you want to hit him with a plug? Yeah, a little bit of a, a little bit of a palate cleanser here. Um yeah, go check out the YouTube page. Got a lot of Alvarez versus Meltzer on there. Already uh, plugged one piece of that. Won't get any new videos until Monday. Um, there's plenty of wrestling this weekend for you guys to watch. So Please just do. sit back. Yeah, sit back and enjoy it. And if you're taking a break between one of the amazing one of the amazing wrestling cards, you know, jump over to the YouTube. Uh, Alvarez versus Meltzer's on there. Quick count, referee's discretion. Uh, creative control, the one episode that we do have, uh, with more to come. Um, you know, and if all else fails, 
you know, maybe you just got that stimulus check. Maybe you're, um, you know, maybe you're the demo God, Pat Lilly, and you just got your, uh, you know, sports check from a long COVID filled season and you want to spread the love a little bit. Go to Kofi.com slash PWO 123. It's as easy as 123. And for just a cup of coffee a day, you can support great shows like the one you're watching right now and the one that you will be watching because right after this, we'll be doing the WrestleMania prediction show. So, you know, we enjoy all kinds of love. What about it? So, guys, we want to give you a quick little break there before we got into NXT here because, man, there's a lot to cover. And and to a degree, I don't know how much we can fully cover in, in a short allotted time here because I thought these were all fantastic cards. Um, they really delivered, mm. in my opinion, on these two nights. This is the NXT that we love, honestly. Um, some decisions that I think left us a little baffled uh, mm-hmm. at, the other, at the same time. Uh, a lot of a lot of really good, great content. We're gonna go ahead and start off here with night one on the pre-show. Zoe Starks defeated Zoe Stark. Stark. I've been watching too much Marvel. I'm saying Starks. <laughs> um, or Game of Thrones. I guess pick your poison. Defeated Tony Storm here. I thought this is a pretty big win for her. Uh, Stark, I think, is a star to look out for. Definitely on the rise. Um, getting this win here on the pre-show, I think, is really big, and may also mean Tony Storm to a different roster. Yeah, I want to get more into that at the very end. I don't want to muddy up the review with too much roster movement um, yeah. theories, but um, that's on, be on the other show. Golly. Anyway. <laughs> First matchup on night one, Pete Dunn versus Kushida. You guys already know. I mean, these guys can both roll. Pete Dunn won. Um, yeah, just great match. Great match. Fantastic. Yeah, match. I don't. I don't think it got enough time. Um, you know, yeah, and ten minutes. Yeah, and the difference between night one and night two is that since night two was on Peacock, um. I think that they were billing that as like a three hour show max. Uh, whereas night one was on, was in their normal, um, you know, USA Nev network time slot. Yeah. So we're looking at 10 Oh five. Their former. Um, yeah. Their former slot um, at, at a 10 Oh five, it was, it would ending. So, I mean, you had three title matches, uh, one number one contenders match, and then this match on here. So I can understand, but you know, I'd love to see these they, guys get twenty minutes next time. When are they gonna cut Kushida a break? Do you have a prediction for that also? <laughs> when he goes back to Japan. Uh, there you go. I I love I love Kushida. I just I really want them to do something with him. Um, but you know. <laughs> He's he's not only the man that time for God, he's the man that uh, creator for forgets about. Yeah. Um. Uh, but I, I mean, someone needed to lose this match, and Pete Dunn, I think they have bigger plans for, uh, including a future match that I'm actually kind of excited for. I think that was mm-hmm. hinted at on night two. Up next, we have the six-man gauntlet match, and this was different because um, typically when you hear gauntlet match, you hear you think uh, it starts off with two. One of them gets uh, pinned, submitted, or count out DQ, and the next one comes in. This was more Royal Rumble-esque in that they came out after, I think it was a three- or four-minute period. It almost felt like Elimination Chamber. Yeah. Uh, without without the chamber. Um, yes. And start started off with uh, Swerve and Leon Ruff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not crazy. Um, then Bronson Reed, LA Knight, Loomis. No, LA Knight was last. Uh, uh, Grimes, Grimes came in. Yeah. And then Cameron Loomis. Grimes, and then Loomis, LA Knight. Knight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and this match was fantastic. I uh, really love the fact it got down to Bronson Reed. And Isaiah Swerve Scott, two guys who, if you guys have been listening all long term, you guys know I'm very high on both these guys. I, I was really happy that they got to showcase here. And and to a degree, it was almost 
on the the verge of Swerve getting in too much offense and then losing. Um, but I, I mean, he hit his semi finisher like twice. Um, he's used it to pin before, but I don't know if he's what it's what he's currently using. The little drive by kick, yeah. um, which I love. It's fantastic. Uh, but Bronson Reed picks up the big win here. He goes on to night two uh, to face the North American champion, uh, Johnny Gargano. More to come. Um, that. I enjoyed this match a lot. Um, like like you and like everybody else, your gauntlet, you know, you think of, you know, you, you think of Kofi Mania. Um, Even Rollins, I think they did for Rollins with uh, the Chamber before, yeah. before or after Kofi Mania one of the two. Yeah, um, I'm still not a fan of the way they are booking La Knight. Agreed. I think I think he did enough in um, in like a 30 second se- uh, sequence right before you know he got hit with a bunch of finishers and eliminated. I think that makes him look fine. So I don't think this is as bad, but. I- I'm of the opinion um, of you just debuted him. I don't want to see him lose mm-hmm. on TakeOver. And also lose to Bronson yeah. immediately, but you guys already know our thoughts on that one. Um, yeah. Um, I'd rather him not but, be in this match and not eat a loss mm-hmm. than have him in this match look decent but still lose. I think he's a guy who talked a lot, and they've already kind of deemed him as someone who can't get it done in the ring, it feels like, on commentary. Yeah. Yeah, I would have rather maybe a maybe an Austin Theory in this spot. I think that would have been really that would have been a great spot. Yeah, this would have been a great spot for him. Um, but it does look like we are moving forward with um, LA Knight versus Dexter Loomis. Um, Loomis um, has Cameron Grimes locked in silence, and that's how LA Knight eliminates him. Um, and then this is the sequence where LA Knight, you know. Gets all the finishers hit on him, rolls out, and Loomis is upset, so he locks in silence again. Um, so that maybe looks like a, a potential feud um, down the line. But all in all, I this match still overall, even with the LA Knight booking, was still was still really entertaining. Agreed. And and once again, very very happy with. Swerve Scott and Bronson Reed getting some shine here. Both of those guys deserve it, in my opinion. Um, they've been on the roster too long and have not received enough attention. So them getting exactly. this here, I, I was very happy about. Walter versus Tommaso Ciampa for the UK uh, Championship. This, oh man, I have a hard time going on uh, what my match of the night is, but it's between this and the next match we're going to talk about here. This was very good. Oh, uh, this was so okay. So this does get the edge for me for match of night one. Um, what almost made me swing the other way was that god awful t- table spot. Okay, you don't need to show the pre cut wood as you know you're zooming in on it. You don't need to show that. You just showed him a bl- you just showed Walter obliterate the table. And then you have a camera immediately come up onto it, and you see the the zigzaggy uh, cut in in the uh, in the announce table, and it's like and it's like um, you know Wizard of Oz. Uh, no, there is there is no man behind the curtain, you know. But obviously there is because you just showed a pre cut table like that. That was like that kind of made me chuckle, um, and. By no means is this match Walter versus Pete Dunn from two years ago at the takeover before Mania. However, this is um, probably my favorite Tommaso Ciampa match, um, you know, since the pandemic started. And, you know, some some people, you know, like one final beat. Um, it, it was too played out for me. It was fine. Um, but you know, I got to eat my words on this one. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa looks strong in defeat. Um, you know, I, I don't know what's next for him, but if he continues to perform like this, I wouldn't mind him maybe putting over some younger talent um, or even 
and and don't put him up against Gar don't don't put him up against Gargano, but you know, I would like to see a Tommaso Ciampa like North American title run. Um, just not another match with Johnny Gargano. Please God no. Um, I would I would not be opposed to a DIY reunion. Just don't have him feud. Yeah, I'm yeah. all for that. Um So there's that. This is, this is a great match, though. Very hard hitting. Some of those mm-hmm. chops, I mean, you hear them and you're just like, uh, uh, how do you? Not in my contract. Yeah, not in my contract. We got to get that copyright at some point here. Yeah, because um, chops, <laughs> chops like this. So up next, triple threat tag team match for the vacant, vacant. NXT Tag Team Championships. It was MSK, which is Wesley and Nash Carter, formerly uh, the Ra- uh, Rascals from Impact, if you guys haven't caught on to the name change, uh, versus the Grizzled Young Veterans and Legal Del Fantasma, who was represented by Ra- uh, Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wild. Um, and MSK picked up the win here. This was an incredible match um, to the point where if we didn't already have a ladder match set up for this, uh, I, I, I want to see these guys roll it back in a ladder match. Mm-hmm. Um, the in-ring action was absolutely phenomenal. The psychology they had at play was great. Having the, the something about takeovers and tag matches where they have the one partner stop the other from tapping out. Uh, I love that spot. I mm-hmm. love that spot so much. Yeah, this was a, another just fast-paced, exciting match. I was hoping for more Legato Del Fantasma. I just feel like they weren't highlighted enough in this match. Um, but I don't think that takes away from anything. Um, keep in mind, this is a triple threat match where there was one tag team that won and two that didn't. I'm going to bring that up in a minute. But just, but just, but just remember that. Um. And and genuinely, fantastic match. Fantastic mm-hmm. was all about Phantasma it. match. Sorry, I you could oh. you couldn't have saved it for later. No. Okay. And main event time: Raquel Gonzalez with Dakota Kai versus Io Shirai. Uh, to I would say no one's surprised, but I, I did pick Io Shirai. Raquel Gonzalez picked up the win here. Um, a lot of it playing to Io Shirai going a little too fast and too reckless uh, and biting the bullet. I'm not going to lie. Um, they had Io Shirai hit her moonsault, and I was like, oh, here it is. It's over. Mm-hmm. And they had Gonzalez pop. And then you had Gonzalez hit that single arm power bomb to the outside, and I was like, she got to get her back inside. Something screw is going to happen, like a roll-up. Mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. They swerved me. They got me this time. Yeah. Um, I was just like you. She hit that moonsault. And I said to myself, if they're going to make her a star, she needs to pop right now. Because there's no way EO gets the win here and you have anything left of Raquel Gonzalez. because. Um, you know, it's kind of like the Rhea Ripley effect a little bit where, you know, you're in where you've been pushed for a while, you know, you're in this big pressure spot, you know, that you are expected to win, you know, and kind of be the next, you know, great NXT women's champion. Um, I don't think they could have revisited this month down the road or even the next month and, you know, kind of regained the momentum that Raquel Gonzalez had coming into this. Um, also, this match got cut short um, by about five to six minutes. Um, I actually thought it was a perfect length. Um, maybe add another minute or two, but um, I, thought it was I think it was that. Yeah, I, think, I don't think this was um, a great match. I hate saying that. Like, I mean, it, it was doable, um, but. Coming off of Walter Champa and then that incredible uh, triple threat match. Yeah. Pete Dunn, Kushida. I mean, I hate saying this. This, I think, was almost my my least favorite match of the night. 
Oh, yeah. Um, um, which, which I feel like is not fair to say um, because, I mean, I feel like none of the matches prior had the same kind of build as this one. Um, um, my, my, my least favorite match was the pre-show match. I wasn't that's my out. That. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> that's, that's my out with that. This, this <laughs> match, like you said. Is this your second yeah. least favorite match? Um, well, yeah. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> um, but I will tell you, it's not my least favorite match of both nights. Oh, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, yes, we will. <laughs> yes, we will. I think that this kind of showed that Raquel Gonzalez can keep up with Io Shirai. And I don't think this is a carry job by any means. Um, Cause I know we've said it a couple times on the wrestle cast that Raquel Gonzalez is still a little green. Um, still got a lot of growing to do, but. Yeah, I still um, felt that during this match. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's going to come, I think, um, the more she's in the ring. But for this spot in this moment, uh, I think the right I, I think the right person won. That's fair. That's fair. Just in time for uh, Sarai to show up and then take her out. Okay. I have opinions on this that I will say for for a not recorded show. <laughs> Night two. Damn it. Night two. Night two. Pre show match. Killian Dane and Drake <laughs> Maverick defeated Breeze Ango. Which is, you didn't know it was Tyler Breeze and Fandango. And, Stop uh, right there. Stop right there. We'll this was a yeah. tag title match. Yeah. So why are we having a number one contenders match? And you might have beaten me to the punch last night when we were watching this. You know, why are we having a number one contenders match for the tag titles when we just had two tag teams come out of the triple threat? So, last night, I was all in with you on this. Today, I'm slightly of a different opinion. I don't care about Drake Maverick. I, I'm with you there. I'm with you there. Um, I think Killian Dane is the best carry job guy in NXT right now because uh, that tag team is nothing without him. First, first of all, uh, man, I really Second, wish they would book Killian Dane like how he was booked as a uh, big demo. Yeah, it, it's crazy. It's crazy to think Let's that. Work. Yeah, it's crazy to think that. Um, you know, him and Alexander Wolf are the last well, I mean, if you got Nikki Cross, but she's a woman, she's she's a woman on the main main roster. She might not get more than two to three minutes in a Is month. she on the main roster? I'm sorry, I forgot. I just thought she was in catering. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Um, That's a gripe for another show and for another time. Yeah, but um, you know, out of the remaining members of Sanity, um, you know, you're your most successful members that come out of that are over in a, over in another company, you know, and looking at it the way it stands now, um, you could have an argument say that Alexander Wolf is, you know, the most successful out of the three that are still in WWE, um, you know, a part of a strong heel, heel stable, Killian Dane, you know, partners with Drake Maverick. So we'll, I guess we'll see where this push goes, but Probably it's very is. concerning. Cross is the only one who's had title gold. So there's that, but they aren't doing anything with her right now. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> it's Wait, frustrating. Also, shout out to her. She's, she's completing her master's program. So I do want to give her a shout out. She deserves that. Yeah. Educate Better than I. As a teacher, I'm about it. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I wish these were better tag teams. I kind of wish Imperium was involved in one of these matches. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't have another tag team to throw out here. In. Um, the but, way. 
No, because Gargano had a match later in the night. He could have double dipped. No. I uh no. <laughs> no, no. First match on the main card, Santos Escobar versus Jordan Devlin in a ladder match to determine the undisputed NXT Cruiserweight title. This was an 18-minute, eight-second-long showcase. Oh, yeah. I learned recently that we had people in our our Discord who had never seen uh, Jordan Devlin before, and they got to see him do what he does best in ring. Um, Santos Escobar. Guys, you already know. I say this every prediction show, every time we cover it. Uh, Legado del Fantasma is probably my favorite thing right now in NXT. Um, and God, uh, two thoughts. A, let this guy challenge for the world title here. I don't think he's next in line, but maybe we should do it. Just maybe. Just maybe. Uh, and also, uh, secondly, and this is just a personal thing. God, whenever he does a suicide dive, I really want him to pull the arrow out again and just... Yeah, a la Lucha Underground as King Cuerno, but a lot of ridiculous spots in this. Yeah, uh, from a pure entertainment standpoint, this was my match of night two. Um, from now, I want to make sure it's coming across the appropriate way from a pure entertainment standpoint. From watching a car this crash, is, this is the match of night two. Um, I'll get to my actual match of the night later. Um, and it's not the damn near hour long match at the end of the show. Oh, um, you talk about the same match. Yeah, there were uh, Jordan Devlin took a took an ass kicking in this match. Yeah. Um, the spot at the end, I don't care if the ladders are, are oh, made God, from a whatever. different material. Yeah. You got um, head butted off the top of a ladder through another ladder <laughs> yeah and set up in the corner so like the possibility yeah, i so mean he already has shoulder cut from it like mm-hmm. nope a lot of nope in that yeah there is no easy way to take that spot you know um you know as soon as we got the run in from Raul mendoza joaquin wild I said, I, I predicted this. And then the badge went on for like another couple, couple of minutes. I was like, dang it. <laughs> um, but exactly, you know, you know, what he needed, you know, give him a little break, get the jump on him, shoot him to the back, finish it on your own. Um, outstanding heel, heel work here. Um, it's very it's strange. Kind of a not heel thing at the end of the match. It kind of started as not a heel thing either, though, because he had his son come out. That's what I was saying. Yeah, he had his son come out. He gave his son the other title belt to hold, and then he masked his son, which if you guys don't know, like, that's a huge deal in Lucha Libre. Like, ah. I I loved (sighs) every bit of it. I loved every bit of it. I want those guys just draped in gold. God, I'm asking the wrong company for this, but please don't mess up this faction. Don't mess mm. up this stable. Don't do it. Have you heard of a stable called the Hurt Business? Uh, don't, don't. No, we're going to get there later. Let me enjoy this for now. Hey, uh, spoiler alert. Uh, WrestleMania SmackDown was the night. Um, Shel- Shelton Benjamin and um, Cedric Alexander were in the Andre the Giant. Memorial Battle Royal got tossed out like it, like they were a sack of potatoes. It was it wasn't even like creative. They didn't make it far into the match. They're back to mid card status. They okay. split this. Fa- yeah, sorry. Um, you know it, it's it's just mind it's just mind boggling. Like like why we do things like this. But welcome to WWE. Cedric and Shelton deserve better. Yeah, and it really sucks a lot here, that here. Shelton so Benjamin let's, just let's save it for now. Let's save it for uh, now. We're talking about NXT. We're talking about NXT. NXT was you're right. NXT was great. We're gonna talk right. about my probably my least favorite match of the card <laughs> of the entire card next. Um, 
I'll I'll pa- I'll pass to you because I'm my gonna... my feelings on this. Um. Okay. I don't think this was a bad match. I don't think it was a bad match. I'm gonna say that right now. Um, it was kind of meh, and I will say I think a part of it was meh because I think there was an injury scare in the middle of it. Um, so Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon go over Candice Lloyd and Indy Hartwell. Indy Hartwell, every time I see her in the ring, A. I'm in love. She's a giraffe. I don't even care. Mm. I don't even care. I'm in love. Mm, uh, but uh, I feel like every time I see her in ring, she's she's improving. She's getting better, in my opinion. Yeah. I feel like she's showing leaps and bounds. I can't wait for her to do a singles run. I, I feel like I, I'm intrigued on what direction they go with her. Um because I, I think there's a lot of a lot of really positive things to happen here. Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart. Also, I love the fact that they have they have gone all in now on being a tag team. Um, we said this in the Dusty in the Women's Dusty Classic, um, and they have they have they have done the thing that I ask thrown together tag teams to do, and they have they have come together, tag teamed up. Come up with a name. I think it's TCB. I think they're team TCB. I think that's kind of what they're trying to push here. I'm all for taking care of business, you know, uh, but they haven't made that official yet. So about halfway in this match, this match is about 10 minutes long. Shotzi Blackheart has a dive, a suicide dive to the outside where no one really catches her. And she just about scorpion slash maybe turns enough. So she doesn't get seriously injured, but it happened. And I remember going, she needs to get looked at immediately. I think your immediate reaction within our own group was nobody caught her. Yeah, that, that was definitely. Like, that. Oh um, my gosh. I, I was genuinely concerned. It was a uh, Lita breaking her neck situation. Oof. Yeah. Like that, like that was for those of you who know what I'm talking about, that's what this reminded me of. This this suicide dive, that's exactly what it reminded me of. And Makes I was sense. Very concerned. Um Shotzi got up to my amazement, honestly. Tagged out to Ember, and I was like, okay, all right, here we go. Match went on for about two, three more minutes. Shotzi got back in and ended up taking a bit more. Uh, offense than I was expecting. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing she is okay. But I, I am telling you now, I think this kind of got the – let's wrap this up now. Um, I don't like the double eclipse when they're, like, stacked on top of each other. I think that looks a little Stupid. bad. Because yeah. if I'm going to stunner somebody or two people at the same time, they go to both shoulders uh, instead of stacking mm-hmm. them on one. Yeah. Um, um, this is my least the cannonball, and that was terrifying because it was yeah. that landed on Indy wrong. And as you guys know, if you can't tell, don't hurt Indy. Um, this is my least favorite match of both nights. It's Agreed. very, it's very clear and evident that I am not a fan of the NXT women's tag team titles. Um, I think there are a better way for you to, you know build your tag team division. Don't use the titles as props um, because that's essentially why we're building tag teams. And if we're building tag teams for the sake of a prop, then, then, then the tag titles are essentially irrelevant at that point. Um, I think that Candice LeRae continues to be uh, the weaker member of their of their team it's pretty clear um like you said in indy hartwell still still young um she is a star, 20, baby she's 24 i didn't think she was that young i thought she was late 20s i didn't know she was 24 honestly and so i just looked um, Girl, let me talk to you <laughs> um, okay well boy at least um no, she continues to get better, like you said. 
Uh, Candice LeRae plateaued a while ago. And serviceable, I think, is the best thing I can say about her performance week in and week out. Um, I, um, I think we all thought that if the way had won this, Sha- uh, Shotzi and Ember were going to be jettisoned to the main roster. Obviously not happening now. Um, so I'm interested to see what the next steps are. Yeah, that's kind of my curiosity. Are we, you know who we haven't seen in a hot mm. minute? I can't remember her new name, Priscilla Kelly. We haven't seen her really since the classic ended. Gigi Dolan or Gigi that... Dolan. Yeah, does that sound right? I think so. <laughs> I'm wondering, so maybe we're going to get some kind of like reform tag team or something. We're going to reintroduce them as a legitimate tag team. I don't have an issue with that, but I want tag teams. So you know what? If we if we sign two singles wrestlers and we take them off a of screen for two months, and then we're gonna debut them as a, as a tag team, and we actually have a set gimmick, do it. Because you know who's really good at that, or who was really good at that? The Iconics, mm-hmm. and it worked. Yeah. They were an actual tag team. So let's do that. Build tag teams and don't break them up immediately all the time. I agree. Stop breaking up tag um, teams and stables. We have five women's tag teams that are competing on night one at WrestleMania. Um, worst case scenario, grab one of them, throw them in a match. Be fine. We're going to talk about Mania later. We're going to talk about Mania later. This is no, about no, NXT. No, just, and NXT no. deserves this. No, I'm just saying I know. that you know you have plenty of capable tag teams on the main roster to where I don't think you have to pluck any down if you're building your tag teams correctly to your point. Um, you know, just invest is what you have to do. Yes, yes, and that's my hope. And, and part of me wonders if maybe they created the NXT tag titles so there had to be tag teams brought up you know, I almost Props. wonder if this was a Triple H. We we don't have anybody, so I guess we have to make somebody. We gotta have a reason for having tag teams. Yeah, it's it's a it's a cold day in hell when you're, you know, when you have championships on your on your brand and they're being used as props rather than championships. All right, up next, Gargano with Austin Theory. Versus Bronson Reed. Uh, Gargano got the win here. This match was fantastic from a psychology standpoint as well. It made a lot of sense. Uh, Reed looked fantastic in this match. Uh, Gargano targeted the ribs early after it seemed like his slingshot spear caught Bronson on the ribs. Bronson stayed standing, but he sold like, oh, that hit, that hit him hard. Similar to how you had Lesnar Goldberg sell the broken ribs off of the first spear. Um, and then had a match for 12, 13 more minutes after that where the focus was on the ribs for so long. Uh, Reed ended up eating, I think, two or three of Gargano's finishers. Um, Mm -hmm. Reed attempted a moonsault. Fantastic match. This is a fantastic match. This is probably match number three for me. Overall, uh, I am tired of Gargano. Johnny Gargano being booked um, the same way every single match. Um, it's where you know it'll it'll kind of be um, a little back back and forth the first couple of minutes, and then he gets his taint handed to him until the last two to three minutes of the match. Where now, I don't think that this was this format have, as much. This this didn't have as much of it, but it but it was there. And it was clear as day. You made Reed look really strong here. The second half of this match was all Bronson Reed. Um. Yes and no. I think Reed had the more offensive moves, but Gargano had that surgical knife attacking the same area. So when he did get something in. It looked really devastating. So once again, like the kicks to the back of the back of the uh, 
to his back where his ribs are, kicks to the rib, um, you know, inverting stuff so that's hitting him, uh, specifically missing, um, you know, the, the, the diving splash and the moonsault. So you're getting the impact on the ribs. I thought this was the smartest they've done a Gargano match since him having turned heel. This, this was good heel work from Gargano. I still think, though, um, you know, just the way that he takes devastating moves throughout the back portion of his, you know, matches. And then somehow at the end, you know, um, just out of just out of nowhere, you know, just hitting one final beat and then that's it. Uh, now, granted, it took two to put down Bronson Reed. Um, you know, and you know, to your to your point, you know, this is the best that Johnny Gargano has looked as a heel. I I think, um, at least from as you point out earlier, a storytelling standpoint. Um, but I I want him to be booked stronger and smarter. You know, I think I think you can do both. I don't think you have to have this formula and I'll use the Kushida match as a, as an example um, where back and forth to start Kushida dominates the second portion of the match all the way up to the last minute and a half to two minutes. And then just this almighty comeback. And then we get the finish we got. Um, but I'm in agreement. This is smart. John, this is smart heel Johnny Gargano. Um, I still don't want to see more of him. But I, I hate saying this, and I feel like I, I hate being this guy. Gargano is just too small to play a heel that's anything other than a chicken shit heel, which is such a, a, a tired trope at this point. Yeah. Um, which I get it because you know what they're getting they're getting his heat he's getting his heat because we don't want to see it right now we don't you know and we talk about what's you know the the go away heat and the you're doing a good job as a heel heat I think Uh, who would agree uh, that there's been wrestlers who have talked about it where it's almost like smart heat uh, you know you're a bad guy and you're doing things we don't want you to do but we're booing you because we want to see you do something better. We want this to be more interesting. And that's now a, a new form of heat. Um, Gargano is just, I am more invested in Gargano when he is working as a baby face. Oh yeah. I don't think his promos are bad as a heel. I think it comes off a little corny. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he doesn't, change the in-ring work enough to me to be healing yeah. um and, and i think once again i think this match was the best example of him as that i want to see him you know target body parts and chop down the tree you know agreed yeah um do more of that also, do more of yeah. this fully um, fully agree i think when the way lost their tag title match. I think this paved the way for Gargano to retain here. Agreed. Um, I, I think I, you could have. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you know, I predicted Bronson Reed to win the title here. Um, mm. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not upset with how good he looked coming out of this, this show. He had a fantastic night one and night two. The fact that he mm. went back to back nights also is going to benefit him here. He looked great in this match with Gargano. Mm-hmm. Let's just do the damn thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Use this guy. All right, your turn. Your turn before we move on here. Oh, no, you're good. Um, solid match. Excellent. All right. NXT title time. Carry and Cross coming out as a gladiator. Finn Balor coming out with the X on his chest. Um. This was a great match. Yeah. Um, I am tired of seeing Scarlett. I know that she is attractive. Um, but you're married. 
uh, that, that doesn't mean anything. I I can still think that some that you know that Scarlett's attractive. Yeah, my yeah, yeah. my problem is her lip syncing and her and her gyration around the ring. I don't think for Cross's character it's necessary anymore. I think I think I think we've. I I mean personally, I don't think she's been useful. I mean. There, there was the there was where she was involved in the Keith Lee storyline where I thought, oh, okay, we're going to actually utilize her as talent, and then turn the corner and here we are with this. Um, it, if she could be off of the TV, that'd be great too. Um, I but I get you, I I have swerved on this also, and I, we disagree with you. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, it's you know I am fully aware. That I am more than likely in the minority when I don't want to see her do this anymore. Um, um, I was with you on the lip syncing, uh, and then last night she only did it for the end is near and fallen prey, and I was mm-hmm. much more okay with that than the entire song. Yeah, it was still too much for me. But um, again, that's just me, and I am in full agreement that I am in the minority. And I'm know, okay with that. Do you know what it reminded me of? I, I mm. genuinely believe this is the first time I've had this this thought of someone uh, watching her do that entire entrance when she got into the ring, and the facial expressions and the like. It, it Karrion Cross when he comes out and he has a crowd mm-hmm. is going to be a billion dollars. Because I mm-hmm. guarantee you, you're going to do that entrance at a WrestleMania one day. If you're smart, you do that at a WrestleMania. I would almost tell you have them do it tomorrow somehow. Um, I don't know how, but find a way. Do it. Um, that entrance with the crowd, when she's running like back and forth, it, it looks rough in the CWC because there's not a real crowd but man you get actual arena filled it's gonna look incredible because i think the crowd's gonna get really into it and additionally all everything she did last night gave me such sensational sherry vibes and and i gotta tell you that was that was something i was missing um don't don't screw this up (laughs) I hope you're right because if you're right, everybody wins. Yes. Um, Carrie you know, Cross. And- I've said this on prediction shows. I've said this before. And I've said that I've been concerned about it. Carrie and Cross is the prototype WWE guy. Mm-hmm. He is, and he has the benefit of being fantastic in ring. He's 6'4, 285, 265, one of the two. Um, he has an incredible look. The way he works is believable. And that entrance is Undertaker-esque. And that it is going to be something that in a live crowd is going to blow people away. Mm, correct. Um, it just doesn't take the same amount of time great. as Taker. <laughs> exactly. Entrance is great. Again, I I don't I'm not a fan of what Scarlett's been doing outside of the Keith Lee storyline, um, but this match itself, my match of the night. Um, this was Karen Cross's best match in NXT, hands down. Agreed. Um, Cross won. I don't know if we said that. All. Cross won the NXT title. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fall and pray, baby. Um, it's time. Doomsday yeah. is here. Undefeated yeah. two-time NXT champion. <laughs> um, it's crazy to think that. But this was great start to finish. Cross looks great. Um, Balor is such a next... great matchup for him as well. Yeah, you know, and, and it makes you wonder what's next for Finn Balor. So there's this part of me that goes – This match was going to happen this weekend anyway, Mm -hmm. even if he didn't get injured. Um, But I imagine because Cross got injured, they just put the belt on Finn. I don't think Finn Mm -hmm. was going to be champion this entire time. We were going to get, I feel like, an Adam Cole 
Finn Balor feud still. We still probably maybe gotten Kyle O'Reilly here. But I do think the cross injury uh, led to the, I think, early breakup of Undisputed Era. Um, we probably would have gotten cross Adam Cole along the way. Maybe we'll have gotten cross Kyle O'Reilly, which mm-hmm. could be a great matchup. I guess we'll find out soon. Because uh, both of those guys work a very martial arts ex mixed martial arts esque style. Yeah. Um, we talked about this in the Discord, and I think you're the one that said it. Uh, this from the vignette to the entrance, from the moment the bell rang, this had such a big fight feel to it, and it was fantastic. The vignette was perfect. Yeah. Um, and it really, I thought, highlighted Cross's mental approach to professional wrestling, like mm-hmm. storyline wise, which is something I don't feel like we get a whole lot of. You had him talk about how, you know, he's going to continue to work what he does best. He's going to continue improving his striking, working his uh, judo tosses, working his, yep. his amateur wrestling. He talked about performing regular switches. They showed him doing actual like combat training um and i think that is such a huge thing to bring to the table we don't do that with a lot of uh of wrestlers right now um and i think that is something that is huge do that more often especially with guys who have that kind of background absolutely 100 percent. and it's so funny we were just talking about this that um you know, at the last few WrestleManias, it's lost, you know, that one match that gives it that big fight feel. And last year, you know, there was no way you were going to get that with no with no crowd. Um, Otherwise, I would have told you Drew, Brock Lesnar would have been it if we had a crowd with it. But yeah. No crowd eliminated that option for him. Yeah. And this from start to finish, you had. You had the amazing vignettes. You had the Finn Balor through throughout throughout the years. Um, the match itself, psychology, everything involved was fantastic. Um, and then you, and then the right guy won. Agreed. You know? Agreed. And, and th- this was my personal match of both nights. Um, I, this th- this is my one A to Walter Champa one B for me and the differences are just very small um whereas start to finish i think overall match feel i think the nxt title match did more for me but again everyone's different so and yeah now i'm with you i oh man oh Ladder match was really good too. I, I don't even know if I could pick one across both nights. This match was incredible though. From a psych from an in-ring work to a psychological perspective to everything that they did right with production. All right. And last you know match what? of the night, unsanctioned. Kylo Riley versus Adam Cole. They went 40 minutes and 19 seconds, both with New ring music or uh, uh, entrance music. Kyle O'Reilly's I was down with. Adam Cole's I thought needed some work. Um, um, to wish- let me let me start off by saying this: that we're lumping this review together because last night we were supposed to do the Hardcore Justice review, and Matt and I were in the minutes. same boat. Okay, at about the twenty-five minute mark. We both started to fade. That's not good. Okay. I was in for this. Um, probably up until they brought the chain out. Um, and the toolbox. And so wasn't that only like 10 minutes into the match? Oh, God. I hope not. I mean, I, I was not a fan of this. Like... Uh, other people have been um twitter went ballistic for this match last night and you know 
and this has always been my biggest gripe with NXT main events um, is that there's always this trope that um, we get multiple false finishes, um, multiple finishers that result in kickouts and matches that go five to 10 minutes longer than they should. Um, and I, I, I gotta tell you halfway, I was good. The back half didn't, didn't care. And then you get into Adam Cole, you know, hitting, hitting a brain buster onto the steel steps and Kyle Riley goes limp. And then, well, I also got. I'm, I'm gonna let you finish, but Adam Cole did that same exact thing three, four weeks ago, and Kyle Riley had a seizure in response to it. So, uh, like, if you if you've established that that is the effect, and then you do it in a match, and the mm-hmm. guy is back up in, you know, two minutes, it, it leaves it, it it hurts. It hurts the match, in my opinion. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I can um, I can safely say that um, this was a this was at um, it was about the 20 minute mark um, when the chain got brought out and then from there 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 were there were spots in the back half of the match I was totally fine with. It's the fact that, you know, we're hitting these, you know, call them, you know, career killers, if you will, or things that will put you on the shelf. And Kyle O'Reilly didn't know self for some of Adam Cole's moves uh, towards the end of the match. And it's another thing that just grinds my gears. And it's not just an NXT, though. Um, it's kind of across just all of pro, all of pro wrestling. Like, yeah. you know, you know, we're gonna get to the finish, you know, and you know, I might know. Not sell a this lot of or, finishers are protected nowadays. There's but only one, and it has one wing. Well, for now, well, um, protected by the best wrestler in the world today, Jeff Hall. Jeff Hall, oh he's the best wrestler in the world today. I just want to see if he's going to catch on if I said this. Keep going along with it. Nobody tell him. You were saying. If, <laughs> yeah. If I, now, I would have given this uh, probably – I'm going to get a lot of crap for this. Three and a half stars out of five. I And I oh – God. It, and it sucks. And you, I'm I'm ready for the heat because the back half of the match was not – it was so slow, okay? It was slow. In my opinion, the wrong guy won. But I think with this, you could have gone either way. Um, a, AEW did the spot through the ramp better. I think that – um, <laughs> like, like you, yeah, I, and you've already said it. Protectors aren't finished, or finishers aren't protected. I'll say this: Adam Cole did not hit the last shot. No, he didn't. So good, but some other stuff hit. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, false, false finishes, um. And just the overuse for Kyle O'Reilly, just too many comebacks. Like, he'll hit a spurt and then an offensive move by Cole, and then it's another just two to three minutes just him getting the tar beat out of him, and then another comeback, and then same sequence, and another comeback. It's like, okay, if, you know, if you're going to book him that way, you know, it's, it's not a good look. Um, so you're talking about getting heat for your rating of this match. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, my friend, I guess they are billing us both from your mama's kitchen 
and we are stirring it up here because uh, I also have it at a 3.5 out of 5. Oh. So here's the thing. If this match was 30 minutes long, mm. four and a half. <laughs> I give it a whole star if it's just 10 minutes less. It, it, it got to a point where it's like, okay, c- come on, guys. Come on. You know? Um, and also, also, I don't know if these were piped in or if these were the people who paid to do this. Don't chant fight forever when these guys are literally trying to maim each other. Because, A, mm-hmm. these guys don't want to go that much longer. <laughs> yeah. You are the people going to get someone hurt. No, stop it. Matches need finishes. Don't fight forever. Yeah, and I'm over this piped-in crowd noise BS. I'm so excited. And, and I'm so excited for Mania tomorrow because I'm actual convinced crowd. that they will not pipe in the crowd noise with actual crowd. I am convinced. I am probably wrong. We'll talk about this on the WrestleMania prediction card. Yeah, but there, but there were moments not just in this match, but across the whole two nights yeah. where it's like, where they're you know piping in you know chants and you know what have you, and it's just like if if you're gonna have you know People your there. enhancement talent, be so they had actual paid people there. Oh yeah, yeah. They actually had uh, someone on Twitter. Post that they were able to get a ticket. Dude was sitting behind Gable Steveson. By the way, Gable Steveson. Yeah, that dude. He's a star. I, I, God, don't get me fired. Please don't get me fired. I was showing uh, a student that at our school um, who said that they're interested in uh, trying out for wrestling. And I was like, let's watch Gable Steveson versus uh, Paris from Michigan considering this was the finals of the NCAA tournament. And yep. look at this guy just be incredible. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sitting there with Stephanie McMahon. Yeah. Uh, no mask, by the way. Um, he, no, no, he did have it on. They took it off when they had the vignette. When they on. did the, the actual and, shot. Because he was actually that. sitting next to – or they had him next to uh, Raquel Gonzalez when they had her show up. Uh, you could see him next to her with his mask up. The other thing was he had a black mask that blended in with his beard. I immediately take that back then. Um, but I think the overall, um, you know, feel of this match in general is that you shave off 10 to 15 minutes and it's a much better match. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. A thousand times, Yes. Um, yes, <laughs> please. This didn't need to go 40 minutes. And, and I, I don't want to sit here and act like it was a bad 40 minutes. It wasn't. It was entertaining. They pulled out some crazy spots. Um, Kyle O'Reilly dropping the knee to Adam Cole while he is on the upside down chair. Dope finish. I'm not I'm not a big fan of diving knees as a finish in general because I'm worried about your knees, but I thought that was a cool one there. Um, when Kyle O'Reilly hit the last shot, I thought that was real cool. Um, these guys could do some really creative stuff. I mean, they smashed a TV monitor too. That was real cool. Yeah. Um, take out some of the rest spots for me. And, oh yeah, that was weird. Um, I, I appreciate it on one hand because you're selling the fact that they're legitimately hurting each other and they can't physically get up, you know. But we need. You could probably cut out about five to six minutes of of them just laying there, and I feel like that's a little brutal, but. That is a full on eighth of your match. Um, you know, we stuck there a little too long. That's just my whole thing. 
I really, I really, really enjoyed NXT Stand and Deliver as a whole. They stood and they delivered. This is the NXT that we want. And I pray, and I think it is, we're moving back to Tuesdays. Or we're moving to Tuesdays. We've never been on Tuesdays before. We're moving to Tuesdays. I really hope the focus becomes only on what NXT is doing. Um, the, the, the ratings war is over. We're done. We're finally done. We, no one needs to talk about ratings again. So help me. We're going to report on it one more time. <laughs> NXT yeah. beat AEW this week by about, I want to tell you, 70,000, maybe 80,000. Yeah. But yeah, AEW it was like 70, won in the primary demographic. <laughs> AEW was considered the number five show, and uh, NXT was number 11. Um, but here's what I want. A, everyone watch your shows. I get it. We're in a panorama. Life's hard. Do your thing. Watch some wrestling. I said what I said. I said what I said. Okay, we'll just keep rolling. Apparently, if you say the other P word, you you don't get – you get demonetized, and I want to try and get monetized. I'm trying to follow all your rules, Internet. I'm trying to I'm trying to do your thing. Help a brother out. Help a good brother out. Uh, so God, I want NXT to be the NXT that I fell in love with. Let's let's go back to not having to worry about beating out another wrestling show. Your only competition are shows that are that no one really has access to typically. You know? I mean, anyone can download YouTube or fight, and I'm all for that, but it's not a cable TV show. I want NXT to go back to the incredible storytelling. I want them to go back to not having the same people on every week. Let's get back to building incredible shows. I I am all for this. I'm so happy that this is finally happening. We didn't even talk about the in, the the intangibles. Uh, we, I forgot about that. I was I was I was even gonna give him a pass on that because the wrestling was so good. No, nope. take take away those intangibles. Yeah, <laughs> who was it? Was it Tommaso Ciampa? Tommaso Ciampa's intangible is he's psychotic. Yeah, uh, shot to Blackhearts was ballsy, dude. Uh, I mean, the ways was that they were <laughs> entitled. <laughs> How's that an intangible? They're entitled. So uh, they, I don't want to talk to them. Okay. <laughs> they didn't miss the boat on Finn Balor. Um, they they could have put demonic. They could because he's the demon. He came out as the demon, which they got I mean, me. They got me for a little bit. I thought he was actually gonna do it. I know they showed him walking down the hallway, but I was like, yo, they're doing like the full setup here, like. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, take anyway. away those intangibles. Those are dumb. Don't do that. Yeah, everything dumb. else I love. Let's see Frankie Money on Tuesday. Sorry, Frankie Monet. Demonet. Demo all I all I can think of is the history of the world part one bit. Count the money. Demonet. Demonet. <laughs> um, don't be surprised if I make a count of money reference a lot more with Frankie and her dog. I apologize. Yeah, of course. Hey, Sarah. (laughs) So, overall, great show. Fantastic two nights of wrestling. Going to be very, very hard for WrestleMania to follow, in my opinion. You you have some big, big shoes to fill. But think about it like this, though. That's That's par for the course. It's always been the case with NXT. Mm-hmm. Takeovers the day before pay per views. Yeah, um, and they have you noticed they've moved away from that lately. Mm-hmm. So, balls in your court, man. Seth Rollins, Cesaro, step up. You guys should be a five star match. Live up to the expectation. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, what about the Nigerian drum match? We'll talk about that on the WrestleMania prediction shows. NXT, you are wonderful. We loved you. You are fantastic. I can't wait to watch you on Tuesdays. By God, I can only focus on you on Tuesdays. I love you. You're fantastic. I love you, NXT. Glad you're back to being you. Uh, and guys, that's the two-man power trip. You've been here for an hour and a half, I think. We appreciate you for it. I don't know how much of this is going to make it, how much is going to get cut. I don't know if I'm going to do any editing at all. I might just upload this right now. Uh, but that's been the two-man power trip, baby. We're here for you. So we'll, we'll see you guys very, very soon for that WrestleMania prediction show that we've been plugging all night. So all night. have a great weekend. We'll see you very, very soon. Bye, everybody. <laughs>